The Manchester United thing is following no logic anymore, and a three-all draw against Porto kind of follows the Manchester United logic, but still doesn't follow real-world logic. Like, within the Manchester United bubble, within the behemoth that is the business of Manchester United, it makes sense. But weirdly, to the people on the outside of the bubble, and even to the fans who now feel like they're on the outside of Manchester United looking in and going, that's just weird. Like, it doesn't make any sense, but also it makes perfect sense. I'm just gonna break a little bit of that down for you, right? First of all, Manchester United fans, I have a, a huge amount of sympathy for what you're going through at the moment. It is entertaining from the outside, sure. And like, if you just surrender to the football that is happening and you just go, I'm just gonna watch the football and just see what happens. It's like an experiment. You're not gonna live through another era like this as Manchester United fans. You're gonna look back on this in 10 years time and go, what was that? Like, that was insane what happened back then. So to an extent, like, you know, be grateful that you're going through this because you never would have had this humbling experience any other way. But at the same time, you're paying a lot of money to go through it or you're paying a Sky or a TNT or whatever fee it is to go through it. And the people who are making money on the other end of it, they're not paying the fee for that. They're not having the troubles that you're having. They don't have the intrinsic link. This is Jim Radcliffe, sure, he's a Manchester United fan, sure. But they don't have the intrinsic pain of paying to travel to see Manchester United in any of these locations, any of those kind of things. And then to go 2-0 up, surrender that lead, and then at the last minute come back through a Harry Maguire header? Like, it just doesn't follow logic. Like, it, again, it does, but not outside of Manchester United. Harry Maguire shouldn't even be at the team at this point. This team should be way more solid defensively because if, if you look at that back line that started the game, there's no reason why they shouldn't be solid defensively. Delo, Martinez, Delict, Masrawi, Onana, Casemiro, Eriksen. It's a relatively conservative back line with that two in front of them. And then Delict, Masrawi, like it's attacking, but it's intelligent. And on the other side, Martinez, sure, he's aggressive, but, you know, it's great. And then, of course, you know, Delo, I think, has been one of your star performers over the last couple of uh, weeks and months and possibly even a year. So it's kind of weird to see. Ericsson, sure, I get the thing. Like, you know, Ericsson doesn't have the movement. Casemiro doesn't have the movement. Porto clearly overwhelmed Manchester United to come back. But the defending isn't like that. Again, it's not new that this is happening. It's not like, whoa, we conceded. What, what's going on? Now it's just sort of like, yep, we conceded. There we go. We scored two we're gonna concede something. So the two goals, the two goals are like tapered with almost meaningless celebration. And sure, it's good to see, it's re really nice when you look at the details of the game that, you know, they've had a, a lovely redemption for Harry Maguire or, you know, a, a goal for Marcus Rashford and the return of Rasmus Hoyland is really encouraging. All of these things, for anyone who exists, outside of the current, if you can take yourself out of like the short term at Manchester United, things are good. Just a little like, weird blippy moment is what you would want to say. Ineos have taken over from the old guys, they've had to pick up, and the logic now that I'm trying to apply to this team is, surely the reason that they're keeping Eric Ten Hag for any reason around at this point is just a financial decision. It's just a decision to go, we've just got to balance the books until we can get rid of you, we've just got to be able to do this, because if you've lost this amount of games by this point, we don't have to pay you this amount of money, these guys are going to leave, this guy should step away, maybe we can convince these people, we need to negotiate this. It's got to be financial. Because, <coughs> excuse me, it's not following any other logic. It's not following the logic of football. It's not making good business decisions. Players aren't looking at this and thinking, that's a well-run club, I'd love to go to that. And yet, over the summer, Euro, I, I go through the list every time. It's a great list of summer signings. It's a list that, under any other manager, would be doing great right now. And even under Eric Ten Hag, I made the prediction, this will be going great right now. But the defence is just all over the place. Like... For the third goal, granted, brilliant finish, and actually some brilliant finishes in this game overall from Porto. And actually, Manchester United, if they'd have had some brilliant finishing, probably could have won 5-3. But the logic would still follow. Winning 5-3 in a game is the hockey score that Jose Mourinho is talking about, rather than the serious footballing score that Manchester United are looking for from any of their games. Now, the weird thing is, some people are going to be angry with me for pointing this out. 
Some people are going to be frustrated that they probably already saw this and when we point it out, it's a bigger issue. Now, I get it. Manchester United fans, I would also be defensive of my team. I would be defensive of the stupidity that is going on within my side because I don't want people making fun of Manchester United. But guess what? Your own fan base is making fun of you at this point. There's like a biryani sketch going on somewhere. There's people who are making money from like, you know, just making up things about Manchester United. And then in the middle, you've just kind of got these central set of journalists who are trying to pick apart like the mad universe that is Manchester United. The fact is, Eric Ten Hag... You can't make an argument, I genuinely can't make an argument for the players are playing for him. There's just like bits of Manchester United we're just picking up all over the place and you don't even know where to start. But the weird thing is, I think if a manager came in and was able to get his head around the chaos, was able to move away from the previous Glazer era, was just go, Ineos, give me the time, give me the, the whatever it is with these players and we'll get to a certain point. Maybe the logic is from Eric Ten Hag and from Ineos, Whatever happens in this period, gentleman's agreement, you lose the team, you do this, whatever happens, you're in. I don't think that's the logic. I think the logic is now the other way, where it's sort of like, well, if we double down on this guy, we'll be good. That we double down, it's not going well. All right, we double down and we double down on the wrong thing. To an extent, it was, what's that financial term where it's like, it's the, you know, good money after bad money or bad money after bad money, you know, it, it, it's, doubling, it's doubling down on a bad decision, basically. And realistically, the really good decision at this point, looking back in retrospect, would have been let Eric Ten Hag go and someone like Ruud van Nistelrooy come in. Someone, I mean, there are loads of managers out there that are above Ruud van Nistelrooy at this point in terms of the pecking order of Manchester United, but you get my point, right? Like, the, the display tonight is simply not good enough for Manchester United. And the problem is you're playing a team like Porto, you've played teams like Tottenham, you've played Liverpool, all of these teams individually prove different things about Manchester United that shouldn't be happening. Liverpool, you've got the coach and you've got a, a squad that they've coached up. They've doubled down on time over all that period. The consolidating of a really good team is brought together that early on Liverpool performed well. We've not seen them against a really good team yet, but they're good. You've then got Porto. Porto are a side who are working on a shoestring budget, finding talent, uh, diamonds in the rough, all these kind of things, making it work. Spurs, team with very similar level of competency to you, a similar level to, of technical ability, Manchester United possibly even slightly better, a smaller institution but making the most of what they have with a manager like Ange Postecoglou. What next? Who are they going to play next that is going to prove something about Manchester United? Because there's no one who can compare on resource, on financial input, on all these kinds of things. And for some weird reason, we just keep going, yeah, that makes sense at Manchester United now. Surely we can't be of the logic that that just makes sense. So, we'll, yeah, like Manchester United is just bad. There were, you know, a couple of weeks ago, I had this conversation of like, are Manchester United good or have they just had two really good, or a couple of really good managers? Sure, they've had some really good managers, but you build off the back of that. The whole point is you build an institution around that. The sponsorship, the stadium, the fans, all of these things are primed for good managers to come in. And so, again, like, I think it comes with an element of complacency from any of the people that come in. They kind of go, we're too big to fall. We're too big to fail. We'll always be big. We'll always be Manchester United. But all that time at the moment now, now I'm feeling others creeping up. I'm feeling City creeping up. I'm feeling Newcastle creeping up. I'm even feeling Chelsea creeping up on these people. Globally, the fan bases are no longer looking at Manchester United in the same way. Apart from people who want a bit of a journey, apart from the people who want a bit of a legacy, apart from people who go, oh, you know what? They used to be good. They'll be back to being good soon. Maybe I should pick them. But that's not the... That's not what you want for your choice of fan. Like, you don't want your fans to be like, I'll choose them because I feel a bit sorry for them. Having said that, I can still pick out some good performances. I still think there are times where I look at the wingers for Manchester United and they go, those guys don't have a plan in the way that they would want to have a plan. They don't have the confidence in the way I want to conduct confidence. Garnacho randomly snatching at shots. I enjoyed Rashford scoring a goal, sure, for Rashford's sake, but I still don't really think it... Like, you need him. He can be doing so much more. He can be maximising that. Rasmus Hoyland scoring, great, good for them. Harry Maguire scoring, eh, so, like... He'll be moving on at some point soon. Good, but did you really want him to score? It's sort of like, ah, did we really even want that? 
Do we actually want, you start to realize the point where it turns is when fans start to go, ah, well, do we really even want that at that point? Sure, we're celebrating because it's Manchester United and we want to save face and all these kind of things, but do we really want that? And then you've got like the bombastic nature of what Porto are doing. You've got a young, audacious manager who's just taken over from another manager who's audacious and passionate. And you're looking at their fans and going, wow, like they really, you know, like things aren't good, but wow. And you do wonder whether it is just a very English thing, whether globally, like you can still just enjoy Manchester United, but whether in England, we just can't enjoy Manchester United. In England, we just can't enjoy the the wet, the, the status of what they are right now, because we just, we can't abide it. It's just not, every country has something that is like a, a you know, a, a, like a form that they just can't, they can't do. We can't do that, lads. Like, we can't, you know, in Italy, they can't do bad defending. In England, it doesn't matter if it's bad defending, if there's good attacking. In England, we just cannot do lack of effort, bad form, like all these kind of things. It just doesn't work. The fans, the culture, the, way it work, the, the beliefs that we have inherently within the society just don't work with those kind of things. And so we just reject Manchester United right now. It's, it's like those lazy, rich people that overtly do it. In England, they're like, do it privately, mate. Don't do that. Don't rub it in our faces that we're bad. Just be bad, but don't, don't overdo it. And that's where Manchester United have kind of messed up here. They've not read the culture. But this squandering of the resource is because of the mismatch of a culture and the reading of the culture. And it's the lack of care. You can now see that lack of care out on the field. The lack of care and due diligence that the fans deserve at Manchester United just isn't there. Because you've got a midfield starting of Ericsson and Casemiro. That is bizarre to me. Now, Casemiro, a couple of years ago, when you signed him, I went, yep, good, stopgap. We'll see who comes in in the meantime. Uate wasn't playing this evening, Maynou wasn't playing, sure. But you need some of that experience in there. But if, can those guys really be learning from these people at this point? Are those people even really passing that kind of knowledge on? Are they just sort of going, yeah, I'm just training at this point? It doesn't really work. In, like, you've got to have people. I'm not saying Casemiro is a bad professional. I'm not saying he's a bad player. Even when I saw that no-look meme thing that he did pre-game, I was a bit like, that's a bit normal. But... Like, there's just this lack of brilliance and excellence and the spark in the air that Manchester United used to have. There used to be almost like a static in the air around Manchester United when they come to town. Now, I'm not saying that many other teams have that right now. I don't think there are many teams in the league where it's sort of like, oh, there's a static in the air. There's an excitement. I don't even think Liverpool have that. I think Arsenal are probably that team with that right now. I think City are kind of a team where there's like a, a buzz and a hum around them. It's not quite a static or a fire, but there's something there. And it's not there with the United. It's possibly with Chelsea or getting there with Chelsea, but it's not there with United. And you've not really felt it throughout the whole Ten Hag thing. And the other day on Sky, they said, oh, he saved his job because he, was, because he won a cup or whatever, or two cups. Bizarre if that's the case. Where's the static in your team if that's the case? It's not even criticism. It's just me going, I know you're better than this. It's, it's like when you've, you know, and I know about that, you've slightly let yourself go a little bit at different points in your life because you're having a bad time and you sort of go, and people go, oh, what are we doing with that, mate? That's the... When you can see it yourself, that's bad. I feel like I made the video like five times. But the bizarre, like counter it's almost like another reality for Manchester United they expected to win against Spurs everyone knew they were going to lose that game like by that point I knew they were going to lose that game before that I'd have gone at the start of the season I'd have gone yeah they could beat Spurs by that point I went yep they'll lose to Spurs even when they won against Barnsley I was like yeah I literally said to the guy who was a Manchester United fan with me yeah like what about a relevant score because it just didn't feel, it was like, yeah, cool, you're beating Barnes. Like, what was that going to do? It's not about any of these short-term results. It's not even this seven or eight game run. And believe me, this whole, I think the brilliant quote from Sir Alex of titles are won <coughs> um, in, you know, in this after January, not, but they're lost before it. You could be losing whatever it is that your goal was this season, despite the head burying nature of Eric Ten Hag at the club at the moment, or the just the bloody mindedness of it to go, I'm good here, I'm going to be around here, stick with it and we'll see what happens. That, I get it, like, I, that must be so um, reassuring and confusing all at the same time. Because you go, 
that's a guy who doesn't care about what the press says. He cares about his performances on the weekend, and I like that. But at the same time, acknowledge reality. And reality, at the moment, sadly, is catching up with Manchester United. And I hate to see that. I hate to see it. It's a boring league without those guys being edgy. Come back, be edgy. Because this isn't edgy. This is just bizarre. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. There's a Discord, there's a Patreon. Enjoy it.